In today's episode, a truck will fly, a Mazda will have an exhaust upgrade, and a window will provide suppressive fire. I am sure that you have seen those images of insects being preserved for millions of years. Well, someone at Mercedes had the brilliant idea to preserve an original G-Class from 1979 in a huge resin cube. The G-Class was placed in a huge form that was step by step filled up with resin. Then it got polished. It ended up weighing over 52 tons. I don't know about you, but to me the thought that this car could potentially outlive humanity is just fascinating. This is marketing done right. This is in my opinion one of the coolest Miatas on YouTube, a 2004 second generation Mazda Speed Edition that burned down in a garage fire. However, the owner decided to resurrect it as a drift car. Now that's a badass design. When building tunnels or other things that need to be excavated pretty deeply, in some situations it is more cost efficient to lower trucks into the construction pit itself instead of building a system to transport the ground. A comment under this video stated the following, I would have shit myself twice, had 5 heart attacks and blacked out 3 times before I reached the bottom. Most car guys not only dream of cars themselves, but their own place to bash and store them. This is a dream of mine, a house, pool and your own racetrack. This specific one is a go-kart track in Greece called the Extreme Kart Larissa. If you think about building a getaway car or ruining your car's engine, then all you need to do to get a massive smoke cloud behind your car is to fill the windshield washer reservoir with diesel. Then root the windshield washer nozzle into the engine intake and then every time you pull on the windshield washer button, you create a massive smoke screen. To me, daily driving ATVs or quads or whatever you call them is a bad idea since it combines not only negative aspects of cars but also bikes. But driving them for fun is a whole different story. Imagine being fueled up on pure adrenaline and racing for positions. Then you need to pit for new tires. You drive into the pit lane and Juan Pablo Montoya is blocking the pit entry because he stalled his engine. What do you do? Any trained crane operator would know what would happen before even watching this video until the end. The crane is extended too much and it caused the truck to swing out. The result is uh, pricey. This is not the mystery machine on cocaine, this is the mullet machine, a 1967 Chevy van swapped with a 460 big block engine from Ford. It specializes in spitting flames and making fat wheelies. You have learned about the first and second world war, but did you hear about the burnout war? It was a war between Australia and Saudi Arabia. In 2013, during an event in Australia, 69 cars managed to do a burnout for 30 seconds at the same time. A few years later, during an event in Saudi Arabia, the number of cars doing a burnout at the same time went to 119, which meant Saudi Arabia took the crown. However, two years later, the Australians struck back with 126 cars. This record will never be beaten again, at least officially, because the Guinness World Record Organization will not acknowledge any other attempts due to emission and environmental impact problems. Did you know the power of wind and hurricanes can be measured in horsepower? Have you heard of the Great Window Actuator fight? Changing mags! Well, there has been expansion to it. 
Remember when a few episodes ago I asked someone to send a video of the 360 camera feature found in some cars? Well, this is the result. Imagine being a GoPro strapped right in front of five individual throttle bodies. Wouldn't that be cool? What I personally didn't know is the fact that BMW was producing V12 engines until last year. Here is a luxurious BMW 763 Li making a very luxurious sound, comparable to a Lambo. Have you heard of the truck? On 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 the truck? My god, it's a truck! Carrying a truck! Carrying a truck! Carrying a truck! During a late model race, some driver did something ultra stupid and rejoined the track right as the race was about to restart. Have you ever seen a suspension that probably costs more than your whole car? Meet the trophy trucks, where the truck itself costs between $250 and $500,000. If you add fuel, tires and other parts, you need another $200,000. But at least it's quite satisfying to look at. The Cadwell Park racetrack has a section where the faster drivers and bikes can actually jump. Here is how it looks. This truck is going to do a burnout. Nothing special, right? Well, check out the size of those wheels. The mirrors are probably bigger than those wheels. There are some cars that share parts and design with other manufacturers. There are advantages to this, like cheaper production and development cost. But if you like to confuse people, there is another big advantage. You can try something like this. Wait a second. Hold on. Hold on. What the fuck? Here's your weekly reminder on what new Formula 1 fans are missing out on. By the way, this was recorded during the last season where V8 engines were used, 2013. If an old Volvo wagon with blacked out windows ever wants to drag race you, I suggest you run. There is no way you can win against a modified car that is shaped like a brick. This is the peak of automotive perfection, Ryan Turek's V10 powered Toyota Supra, nicknamed the Formula Supra. Why you may ask? Just listen to this. 750 brake horsepower out of a naturally aspirated Judd GV4 V10 engine that was developed for racing series like Le Mans. A engine like this needs to be rebuilt every 3000 miles. For anyone who has doubts about old American muscle cars resembling boats instead of sports cars when it comes to handling, check out this 1968 Chevy Chevelle SS pushing the limit during an autocross event. Drag racing on anything that is not a prepped racetrack is not a good idea, especially in a professional drag racing car. Here is Henny Watkins crashing a few years ago after losing control of his, I assume, first generation Toyota Corolla. The driver was okay by the way. Look at this image. Does this car look photoshopped to you? Well, it isn't. This is a real car, painted by an artist that apparently really likes the Borderlands style.
Mazda RX-7s are getting harder to find, but I would like to remind you that there were times where you could just buy them relatively cheaply. That's why abominations like this jet-powered RX-7 exist. This is Günther Schachermeyer, a stuntman from Austria that really likes... Uh, Vespas. So far, he did a lot of stuff with them. He bungee jumped from a giant dam, he jumped out of an airplane while riding his Vespa. And he drove up a ski jump ramp. That's everything for today. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day. That doesn't make sense.